why passive investing strategy worked so well over the last 40 years. Not just in the stocks that we're seeing here, but also in the property market. And we can see that both the stocks and the properties have increased by folds over the last 40 years. And passive investing is defined as holding to good assets long enough, you should see an appreciation. But why over the last 40 years? This was because that interest rate was on the decline the last 40 years. But it seems like the interest rate are in a transition to remain higher for an extended period. And how would that affect our stocks and properties? And can we still rely on passive investing strategies in the next few decades? My name is Con Hao. My work in this channel, as always, is to study behavior science in finance, discover correlation between different markets, and uncover potential opportunities. And before we get into this subject, please do take some time to read into the disclaimer. Before we discuss about the investing strategy for a higher interest rate environment, let's try to understand the reason why on a interest rate downtrend, assets prices go up over time. And we have to understand that with a lower interest rate, it is very enticing for borrowers or investors to borrow money and buy into the stock market and buy into the property market. And if the mass market behavior things like, like that over the last 40 years, uh, when there's mass participation, everyone doing the same thing, uh, borrow to buy into stocks or invest in the companies for expansion or into the property markets, and naturally, over the last 40 years, we saw that the stock market went up by force and the property market went up by force. In this case, it is the US property market that we could see if we take this reference point at 80, today about 160, technically it increased by one fold. And I would say that the, the West, they like to invest in stocks, but the East, we love to invest in the property market. And if I'm going to reference to the Singapore index in the 80s that we're seeing here, the property market could be at point of 20 and today's at 200. So technically, we're seeing that the Asia property has increased by force at least 10 times. And I would say that 10 times is an understatement. And you know what I mean. Many of us, our properties, if you reference to the 80s, it increased by maybe 20 folds. But I'm suspecting interest rate is only starting to rise and there's a risk it may climb further. Why is this so? And we experience a high interest rate is because of a higher inflation the whole world experiencing. And let's try to understand the relationship between the interest rate today with a high inflation in this four market demonstration with US debt, US inflation, T-bonds, and US dollars and why the inflation is so high today and there's a risk that it may go up further. And that's what I mean. And why is this so? It's because of the US debt and we cannot perpetually have or get into debt forever. It got to stop somehow, but we knew that it's almost impossible for the US to reduce its debt. It seems like it's going to be a perpetual problem that they will have to face. And with the ongoing U.S. debt, the only outcome is that the U.S. dollars will be diluted. With a dilution of U.S. dollars, inflation will naturally pick up. And some of us may say that no, U.S. dollars has been going up. But if we're going to compare to the developed countries with the U.S. dollars, and we could see that this is a comparison between the U.S. dollars and Sing dollars. In fact, over the last 40 years, the US dollars is underperforming with those of the developed countries. And if we're going to look at the dollar Swiss, it's even worse off. It was at one point at four, today is at one. It means that the US dollars have depreciated by four times. And we have to understand that with a printing of money, the US dollars will get diluted or depreciating. And with a depreciating US dollars, inflation will naturally pick up. And with inflation, interest rate will be on the rise. And there's one more thing about the UST bonds is that we also saw that the UST bonds, 
over the last four decades, after the pandemic, it's not just the UK having their bond crisis. In fact, US, they are having their bond crisis as well until today. And when bond crisis broke this significant uptrend line, it also represents that investors are losing trust with the US capital market. And we can see that in this four markets, the US debts, inflation, T-bonds, and US dollars, they are very closely related. And that's my proposition that I believe that the interest rate will continue to move up. And the question is, with a possible change in trend, I'm referring to a long-term trend, are passive investing strategy going to work as well into the next few decades? Asset class like the stocks and property should be facing some headwind. Comparing to today and in 1995 when I first started in this career to be able to hedge into and trade into an instrument like the yields. Yes, you can trade into the interest rate called the yields or the indices and the bonds or the currencies. Now, during this changing of tides, then, that's in 1995 or slightly later, to do that, you must be someone having a private banker serving you. But today, all these instruments that I'm referring earlier, yields, indices, bonds, currency, they are available to us. If we understand where interest rate is heading in the long term, passive investing strategy that works in the last four decades that may not guarantee it will work equally well in the next few decades. Stay tuned for my coming tutorial. Remember to subscribe to my channel. The market are always telling us on their next move. Feel free to leave me any comments below. I love to exchange ideas with you. Really happy that you stay through this tutorial. You have many great trading weeks ahead.